So you want an ombre wall DIY? Well, you've come to the right place. We recently repainted my daughter's room with a two-tone ombre wall, and I know what you're thinking, but it was actually shockingly easy. And if you're thinking that we're actually secret artists and have some, you know, like mad painting skills, we don't. In fact, I'm pretty sure my seven-year-old is actually a far better painter than I am. Hey guys, it's Wendy Valencia. The key to a easy, awesome ombre wall is preparation. Taking the time to set everything up beforehand will save you so much heartache in the end. So let's jump in. First things first, you're gonna pick the color that you want to ombre. We chose aqua and pink, a bright pink for our daughter's room because it perfectly matched her new bedspread and we actually took the bedspread to Home Depot to match the paint, not even gonna lie. And that is actually tip number one. If you are trying to match something, I highly, highly, highly suggest taking the item with you when you go to, let's say, Home Depot or wherever you're gonna get your paint because the lighting directly over the paint chips is fantastic. So you can put your item and the paint chip right next to it and match it perfectly. If though your item is large, let's say like a sofa or something that you can't pick up and take with you, then get as many paint chips as you can and go ahead and bring them home. So once you have picked the colors that you want, you're going to figure out how many transitions you want. And by transitions, I mean lighter, lighter, and lighter. Most DIYs for ombre walls are going to tell you you want three transitions. And here's what I'm gonna tell you. Those transitions are drastic, like these. Now, if you want a more gradual transition, you're gonna go with at least six and your primary color and then white being two of those. So four transitions between your primary color and then complete pure white. It isn't that three transitions look bad. It just looks really, really stripy. And we wanted a much more like gradual fade when we did ours. So tip number two is if you want a gradual fade, do at least six transitions. That includes one pure color and one pure white. So pure color, four transitions, pure white. So tip number three, always ombre to white. Even if you are transitioning to a second color like we did. And the reason is, when you are ombreing from one color to another color, if you don't go to pure white, at some point you're gonna have to mix the two colors. And in our situation, aqua plus pink equals purple. And there was no purple in the room, so we didn't want to mix our two colors. So if you ombre always to white and then start your ombre again, maybe on the bottom like we did, then you will never have to worry about mixing two different colors. Now you can do that if you want a third color in the middle, that's okay. But for us, we didn't wanna do that. So once you figure out how many transitions you want, it's time to go shopping. You're gonna be purchasing a lot of supplies, so make sure you make a list. The first thing you're gonna need is two cans of paint. We chose the bare eggshell finish paint, interior wall paint. This video, by the way, is not at all sponsored. Oh, how I wish it was, but it is not sponsored at all by Bear. We just really, really like Bear products. Their paint is amazing. When we're painting interior walls, we always choose the bare paint plus primer in eggshell for interior walls because like I said, it's the best. So you're going to take one of these cans with your paint chip up to the paint guy and have him mix your colored paint and the other one you're just going to put in your cart because it's going to stay white. Then you're going to look for the rest of the supplies. You will need for each color, each transition, and keep in mind, each transition is its own color. Something to mix the paint in, a stirring stick, a narrow roller for painting the stripes, and a disposable paint tray for each color. So for us, that meant five transitions plus an additional one for white for each color because we were doing pink and aqua. 
And then you're gonna need a paintbrush for each transition. And I am serious when I say you need a paintbrush. You cannot use one paintbrush for this whole project because wet paintbrushes do not work for this project. So unless you wanna pull out the hairdryer and dry your paintbrush in between each thing, which I don't recommend doing, go and buy paintbrushes for each transition. Now we, because we're cheap, we bought the cheapy, cheap, extra cheap, cheap paintbrushes. They're like a dollar a piece and the bristles fall out constantly. So if you buy those, you are gonna be pulling hairs off your wall as you go, which is fine. I can deal with that for a dollar. Don't forget to buy something to cover your floor if you don't already have a tarp at home and make sure you get lots of painter's tape if you don't have that already at home. I mean, you can paint it freehand, but painter's tape looks way more crisp. Tip number four is gonna be a little awkward, especially if it's a Saturday and you're in Home Depot, but I promise you, if you do this, you will be so happy because you will not forget anything and you will not have to stop mid paint to run to Home Depot and buy the one thing you forgot. So you're gonna lay everything out on the floor in Home Depot. You're gonna put your colored paint can on one end and your white paint can on another, and then you're gonna set up your transition trays put a roller in each transition tray and your cheapy paintbrush in between each tray and one in between the can and the first tray and one between the last tray and the can. Put the stirring sticks in there too and you're mixing and everything. Every single thing you're gonna be using to paint, lay it out on the floor in Home Depot. People will stare, you'll be okay. And if you're like me, visualizing it actually makes it a whole lot easier. So now you're gonna get started painting. First, you need to measure your walls from the ceiling to the top of the baseboard. And this is probably the only even slightly difficult part because it involves math and you know how I feel about math. So basically you're gonna take the total number of inches or centimeters or whatever unit you're working in and divide it by the number of paints you have. So if you have one solid, four transitions, and one white, then you're gonna divide that number by six. For us, we had 11 stripes. Wait, 11? Why 11? You have two paint colors, why would you have 11? Well, keep in mind, we have one solid color on the top, four transitions, a white stripe in the middle, and then we started with a solid color of pink on the bottom, four transitions, and then we transitioned to that same white stripe in the middle. So there's not a double width of white in the middle, it's a single width, which makes 11. That meant our stripes were about 10 inches each, but we did have a couple inches left over, so we put an inch on the top and an inch on the bottom extra. Tip number five, draw it on a piece of paper first. This will make your life so much easier. It is so much easier when you can visualize something. If you draw it on the paper, you could actually like shake things up. You could make the bottom half your solid color and then do the ombre only on the top half or maybe you do the solid color at the top and solid color at the bottom and ombre to white in the middle or maybe you even like diagonally across ombre. Whoa, I'm getting way off track and way too complicated. Seriously, draw it on a piece of paper, it is not hard once you start thinking about it that way. So once you know how to do it, you need to get a pencil and kind of freehand it on the wall. And you're gonna get a tape measure and make marks like every three feet or so. So your lines will be generally straight. They don't have to be perfect, but they do need to be more or less straight across. Don't spend too much time stressing about how straight your lines are, it's not worth it because you're gonna be blending later. So the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna start taping everything to protect it. So you're gonna tape the baseboards, you're gonna tape the windows, any light fixtures, you're gonna tape the walls next to the wall you're ombreing. After years and years and years of painting our own walls, we, we've come to discover that although using painter's tape takes a lot of time, it makes your finished product look so much more crisp in the long run. So now it's time to lay out our supplies on the floor just like we did in the store and get to mixing the paint. So it's time to start mixing your colors. We're gonna start mixing our colors based on the rules of have. So here's what you're gonna do. Your first color is going to be directly out of the can and that is your solid color. Your second color is going to be a mixture of the solid color and white. So what you're gonna do is you're going to fill up your container halfway, about halfway, 
with your solid color and then you're going to put an equal amount of white in there. Now, why are you making so much in your second container? Because your next step, once you've mixed and mixed and mixed and it's perfectly mixed really well, you're gonna pour half of that color into the next container and put an equal amount of white in that container. And then you're gonna mix and mix and mix and mix and mix and you're gonna pour half of that new third color into the fourth container and an equal amount of white and mix and mix and mix and mix and mix. You get the picture. So you keep doing that until you have as many shades as you want. Tip number five, before you actually start this process in painting, go to Michael's or Hobby Lobby and buy one or two cheap canvases because you're gonna use them right here after you mix all your paint. You're going to actually paint your paints on the canvas and then let it dry. But Wendy, I didn't want to paint an artist canvas. I wanted to paint a wall. The reason you're doing this is actually threefold. Number one, it allows you to perfect your technique by practicing on a canvas. So by the time you get to the wall, you've already done it perfectly. Second, and this is probably the most important, it allows you to check that the colors are exactly what you wanted. You know, when we did it, we actually ended up having to add a little bit of the dark colors to each shade because it, it just looked better. Third, it actually gives you homemade art. You know, just slap some gold leaf or some silver leaf on there and you got yourself a pretty awesome piece of artwork you can hang on the other wall that doesn't have any color on it. So now it's time to finally start painting and you're gonna work your way from the top to the bottom. Tip number six, make sure your brushes and your rollers are 100% dry because any amount of water in those brushes or rollers will cause your paint to run and it's gonna run down the wall and mess up everything. You know, it, it's almost like this happened to us. So once you start painting, you're gonna need to work fairly quickly so your stripes don't dry in between. So what you're gonna do is you're going to paint the first stripe entirely. And then very quickly after you paint the first stripe, you're gonna paint the top half of the second stripe. Once you have finished the wall of the top half of the second stripe, you're gonna take your dry transition brush and go in and brush the two colors together. We worked at about a 45 degree angle, so like this, and you only wanna move your brush up and down just a little bit, just enough to blend the two colors together. Once you've blended the whole line, you're gonna go get your roller for the second color and you're gonna paint the bottom half of the second color and the top half of the third color. Grab your new dry, clean transition brush, not the same one from before. You're gonna pick it up and you're gonna brush your transition. So you're gonna keep repeating this process over and over and over until all of your stripes have been painted and the transitions have been brushed together. Tip number seven, we're gonna call this learn from our mistakes tip. To avoid mixing up brushes and rollers, only have one in your hand at a time and always put it back where you picked it up from. I know it sounds silly, trust me when you are over there fixing something that you did, I guarantee you there will be a point where you wanna have two brushes in your hand. Don't, seriously, don't do it. And the golden rule of painting, if you screw something up, let it dry, do it over again. That is the beauty of paint with primer in it. If you mess it up, you can always go back over it and it won't show through. So, I'll see you in the next one. See ya. We're out.